Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. Today I'm going to play an England Gambit against d4 because I'm feeling like I don't want to play any objectively good ideas. No, no, no. An England Gambit, of course, attacking the pawn. They did not play bishop f4. Heartbreakingly. Okay, they trade everything? That looks like a terrible idea to me. Because I'm going to play bishop b4 and pin this. Threatening just to win a pawn straight away. Bishop d2 is a natural follow-up. Okay, our opponent really mishandled that, I think. I mean, this is a dodgy opening, but I, I feel as though I've got a reasonable position. I mean, we've got a knight developed, we've got a bishop, well-placed. They're going to be castling kingside. So I'll be damned if I don't play d5, move my bishop and castle queenside, to then play h5, yeah. Okay, well, this is, uh, this is the kind of chess that I want to be playing. An opposite side castling position. If I go here, comes with tempo on the queen, but there is f3. The only question is, is inducing f3 a useful idea? I kind of don't think so. But what if I just played h5? And if you take, take, there's problems here. You know what, boys? Bishop g4. Because why not? The more pawns you push, the more weaknesses there are. And I am fully, fully willing to give up this bishop for an open h-file. They instead move the queen. Oh, now that's interesting. Okay, let's just castle. We have the idea to play bishop d6, which we will play, uh, you know, are making our opponent just basically waste a move here, allowing us to play this with a checkmate threat. Now, okay, I've played this terribly. So has my opponent because inducing, the, yeah, playing f4, I think would have been a better idea there. Because you play g3 and all of a sudden every single light square around here is horribly weak. Also, h5, h4, now there's a hook. A hook is a super, super important concept if you want to play some sexy looking attacking chess. So a hook, for those of you who haven't had it rigorously explained before, is a pawn pushed in front of the opponent's king that allows you to force open a file that would be advantageous to force open. In this case, of course, our h-file. Now, the question is, do I play bishop h3 and win this trapped rook first? I don't think so. I think we don't, we just keep all the pieces h5. And the reason we want to do this is, of course, as I said, to play h4 and tear this open. But also, that, like, what, what are you going to do to stop me doing that? Are you going to play h4? Because if you do, we can play g5, most likely. And if you take, we could probably go here, and then we can push this open and tear everything open even more. Every single pawn pushed in front of the king leaves drastically, drastically bad weaknesses. And even if you do play h4, we could still go in and win this rook. But yeah, okay, what is my opponent doing? This just isn't even isn't even fun anymore. They're just making it too easy. I mean, you're telling me there's, you're going to play no opposition to h5, h4. Okay, bro. Okay. Have a nice game. I mean, okay, bro. I mean, I mean, <laughs> sack a rook because we undermine this pawn. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh oh, that's a check. Looks like we'll drop back. Are they gonna take my rook? Oh, they take my rook, do they? I'm pretty sure this works. I haven't calculated it properly though, and that, that's maybe cause to cause for concern. Check. If king here, I take here and that's checkmate. King here, I can go check. King here, check. The king runs, I take here maybe? <laughs> um, oh dear. I think we start with check. Then I think, yeah, then I think we go check here. We are just using all the pieces, and then we can go check here. Okay, we have four pieces, but they're all just doing their job. You're going to move? I can go check. I can take the rook first and then go check. I think we should grab the rook here to open this up. Yeah, look at this. We grab the rook, and if you take back, I play check. And if you block with the bishop, we go here, but then this bishop blocks. But then, check, king here. How do I do this? If there isn't a checkmate here, I will gouge my eyes out. Sorry, that was extremely graphic. Um, 
I can play this first. Okay, I haven't really been very, you know, I haven't actually calculated much at all. I sort of just sacked a rook because I thought my opponent was playing like such a moron that I could get away with it. I think likely it wasn't the best move in the situation. But I don't know, because this, this seems to all be by force, except for my think they should have played king e2 here, like definitely, because why would you let my... Uh, my queen come in with tempo. So, okay, the question is, what is my follow-up now? Do I go like this first? I think when calculating, you should you should look for the most forcing moves, right? So, this check, you're not going to go here because then I have a double check and can win the queen. So, knight f2 forces king e2. But after king e2, you know, what actually is there? Like, rook h2? And the, the knight stops you from running out of the... Oh, I don't even care if this isn't the best move I'm playing it. Check. You can't go here because of a double check winning the queen. And that open h file that we use that hook, that very central concept to open, is going to allow the rook to saunter into h2. And I, there's just no way to stop a discovery on the next move. Because my knight stops you from stepping out of this rook's line here, and then if you step down here, then my queen's there, and you can't go to f3. So I think rook h2 just is, like, game-winning on the spot. Bang. What is this? I don't know. When my opponent played queen c1, that was just... That was just very dumb. Because right now we are threatening to win the queen. We are also probably threatening checkmate in a million different ways. Okay, they think they've pinned my bishop to the queen, but of course there is the discovered check. If I go here, the king can actually take. So I'm not, I was not threatening to win the queen at all. What I can do is this. Which you've got to assume is winning. What are, what are, what are the legal moves? If the king goes here, is that playable somehow? Thing is, the second you come up, you're never getting back. Because my rook cuts this whole... This whole rank here. So if I go here, the natural, you know, the, the instinct is surely to run to safety. You know, back, back, shrink away the feeble and humble king. However, I think that then check bishop here. And that is just checkmate. So the king can't go back. So knight e4, the king literally has to go to here. Unless you're willing to block and just hang your bishops. Okay, that, we don't need to calculate that. Here, king d3. It's got to be. It just has to be. We, we, we have like knight c5. We are hunting this king here, boys. Again, they now cannot go back, which is crucial. I like this move. Because again, you can't step out of this discovery. Uh, unless you go to, to d4 and walk further up the board. This is just all about discoveries. And so you know what I mean? To keep it in the spirit of the game, let's do it. That's obviously not the only reason I've played it. This is also because I think this might be the best move. However, we're going to hesitate for no longer because this is just... What you really don't want in the game of chess is for your king to be your most developed piece when there's still 5, 14, 20 points of material on your back rank. Probably doesn't bode well that your king is your most developed piece. Now... I also, actually, I didn't calculate knight c5 check. Which I maybe should have done. But after, I don't know, king here. Then I'd have a check, actually. Okay, well, no use calculating what is in the past. This rook is just beautiful. Because we just cut the king off. And you can't even go c3 to try and slink back because the rook is too... You play c4, though. <laughs> what? Okay, we have a double check. I do need to hurry up though, because my time is, is dwindling away. Again, all these squares are held. If I do this, and you take with the queen, let's say, then I can just win the queen with knight d6, discovered check. But I want I want a mating net, do you know what I mean? Okay, so the double check then. Double check, king c3. I think the king's like, it's getting close to running away and I don't like that. I'm gonna take this. You can't take with the queen because you just lose the queen. So you have to take with the king or play king d4. I mean, this means the king is coming to the fourth rank, boys. And, uh... <laughs> okay. 
it does come to the fourth rank. We have check, we have check, we have check. We also have check, amongst other things. Okay, we're just going to go for this check because I have a minute 14, and if I mess up this game, I will cry. This also stops you going to b3, and this is held. So it does feel like, you know, the king's not ever sneaking back and actually being safe. We just can't let this bishop pair get activated. So where does the king go? If it goes back to d3, then we go check, and that is mate. No? Yeah, that's mate. Oh, so the king can't go back. I didn't even notice that. Okay, this was a great move, because this is checkmate. The knight holds c3. That's awesome. That's so awesome. So you can't go back. So you go across. <laughs> I love this game. Here, here, here is held. We have a5. And if here, check. I might have to do it to him. a5. If you take, there's queen b6, king a4, knight c5, queen has to take. Queen takes and then presumably mate somewhere. Because if b4, we've got check driving the king back up. Okay, I'm going to sort of lock in a little bit. Oh, this is this is pretty forcing. But also there's this here. I think I'm going to go check. King here's forced. Okay, then we're going to go check. And win the queen. The king's still on a4. I'd have liked to have not had to do that, but... It's okay. We'll go check in from behind. Check. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Sack my rook. Play queen c6. Play b6. Oh. 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 Okay, I don't know why my, my inner stockfish just came out there with that rook sack and that pattern there. There might have been a quicker mate, but what a way to do it. Held b7, by the way, held by our king. What a game. Let's analyze. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. Obviously a mess, but actually, okay, 90% accuracy doesn't sound that bad. Four blunders sounds bad. However, the, these aren't blunders because look, look where they're situated. Here, the England gambits are blunder. This was our opening. I don't know why I played this. Kind of just was feeling it. Um, it's obviously a bad move. So this is this is the opening prep. The other blunders, are, I believe, where we had forced mate and gave it back to a, for instance, minus 6.6 .6 situation. So I did miss some mating nets, like mate in five, a mate in 14 that I missed, and uh, of course a mate in nine. I mean, these aren't blunders. So this game is actually much more accurate than than four blunders would... would uh, would suggest. Now that could just be cope, but I, there is a genuine point to be made there that these are these are not meaningful blunders. The mistake. I mean, we go from nine point seven to 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 four point seven. Like, and then the inaccuracies. We, we should be proud of those anyway. You know what? Let's just go through the game uh, relatively quickly. So of course, yeah, we go for this England gambit line, just hoping basically for uh, Bishop F four here, Bishop back, Queen here, and if Bishop here. Then we just win with bishop b4 but if knight here i was going to basically go for this line where we sack our queen um for two minor pieces and it's just really funny and it's also good for youtube tiles but of course we don't get that and instead our opponent just kind of gives us an even game which uh they absolutely should not have done then we develop normally d5 bishop here was not a bad move and if f3 then i've got i've got okay i've got bishop d6 and then if you play g3 all of a sudden you've pushed like everything in front of your king and things are looking horrible. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, one sec, by the way, I think my plan if F3 was H5. Yeah, terrible, terrible move. I might not have played it, but uh, I also definitely would have played it. Mm, yeah, this is definitely extremely bad. Anyway, um, Castle's queenside, bishop back. And yeah, I told you, F4 is definitely a bad move because we've got to move the queen. Things stay a little bit more uh, secure over here. The second you push this, we went h5, which wasn't an accuracy. Okay, the, the engine would have preferred queen h5. But they went for g3 instead, really weakening the light squares. We went h5 to try and abuse that hook. Although in this case, apparently queen h5 would have been better. But still, really good. And the second they allowed us to, h4. And then the potency of this idea is immediately clear. We take, they take. Oh, 
Best move. Boys! This is the best move. I didn't even... I mean, obviously, if they take, then uh, they're getting checkmated was my, was my main idea. But they took here. Oh, I should have taken with my rook? <sighs> okay. Check was inaccurate, but still great. Bishop h3, here, knight g4, king here. We take this, then we pick this up. And okay, this move was forced mate in eight. Oh, I just like the idea of getting these discoveries set up. I didn't properly calculate this. Check here. Oh, that is that is something special. And we have knight d3 takes and mate. Okay, I could have probably calculated that and gone for it. But we go for the knight check instead. Then rook h2, just because I thought that was a beautiful idea. Then we missed the chance to do this. Force king here. Oh, oh, that is rank. Because if king takes this is mate. Bunch of different mating ideas. Obviously, there were going to be forced checkmates that I missed there. But we go for, okay, queen back here. Beautiful. And again, knight d2. Okay, look, this was a blunder because instead of finding a mate in seven, which, I mean, I did mention knight c5, but I didn't really put much time into it. I wanted to take here and open the king up. We blundered it to, like, what, a minus eight position. This isn't a blunder. King here. Oh, sorry, queen here, I should say. A5 which was inaccurate because king a4, but if they take queen b6 here, knight here, <laughs> ignore this blunder symbol. This is annoying me now. We won the queen and now it's mate in 10. Okay, did we find, okay, it's mate in eight from here. Did we find the mate in eight here? Oh, <laughs> I had queen a6. I just, I liked this. Okay, yeah, we messed around way too much. I can't lie. The king hunting was uh, clearly the whole point of this game. I mean, the king went from, uh, went from, we sacrificed a rook on h2 and we checkmated the king on a6. That is absolutely insane. Look, watch this king. I mean, that is ridiculous. Okay, boys, I've just counted. And from our rook takes h2, from when the king accepted that, there are 21 more moves in the game. Our opponent moves their king another 15 times. I just, I mean, this is beautiful. That is basically three quarters of their remaining moves were king moves. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed playing this game. Hopefully you really enjoyed watching it. Hopefully there were a lot of useful ideas as well and you guys can uh, can learn a few things about playing this kind of artistic attacking chess. I mean, the motto of the, uh, the romantic era chess players was effectively, why win if not beautifully? And uh, this is absolutely the case in this game. I'm very proud of this. I know my opponent played badly at the start, allowing me to just open the H file. However, rook takes H2 actually being a good move and then just hunting the king for 15 out of the next... 20 minutes. I just can't believe it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. All of you who've made it all the way through the video, I really appreciate you. Also, a large part of my audience now will actually be quite recent and quite new to the channel because of the uh, YouTube shorts that have been absolutely popping off. So let me know in the comments if you are here from seeing the shorts and then investigating the channel and liking my other content. But yeah, I'm just I'm super happy about the channel growth at the moment. Coming into the uh, the later months of the year as well, it's when the, uh, the ad revenue gets nice. I'm joking, but also I'm not joking at all. But the thing I'm most concerned with is it's when you know the whole youtube algorithm really picks up and you can get some serious serious growth on the channel so i've got i've got big dreams big aspirations for this channel uh we've just hit thirty thousand subscribers by the way which is amazing thank you to everyone who has subscribed every i mean I, I just can't put it into words how happy i am about i mean i've done a few live streams recently and it's been like an average of 150 viewers we got to like 200 viewers at points during the live streams absolutely incredible support i just yeah, I mean, thank you all. I'm hoping that if I keep this up, I'll hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. The current growth rate is crazy because I'm getting like loads of interaction with the uh, the YouTube shorts. And then of course it will be on the way to 100,000. I, I genuinely now am feeling like this this channel will, will hit 100,000, you know, within the next year. That's my, I feel, I feel very good about that. So yeah, thank you all for joining me along this, this awesome journey. And uh, yeah of a wholesome end to the video but i just really appreciate all your support thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one goodbye